In this video, we're in the responsive WordPress theme, and we're going to learn two methods to change the header font of your website. The first method uses inline CSS, and the second method uses external CSS, and is the recommended method for web designers. In the process, you'll see we're also going to learn how to change the style of any font on your website so I hope this potentially helps a lot of people. To use the first method, we have to find exactly where this make your website text exists on our dashboard. In our dashboard, I know that that text is written in appearance theme options. In theme options, I know that it's in the home page section. Opening up this tab, we can find the text right here, and this could say anything. To use inline CSS to make this change, you have to start writing CSS literally in the same line as the text. So let's do it. Follow along with me just as I'm doing. And I'll explain what this all means in a second. What we have here is a new paragraph style, followed by the font family selector, the Georgia font, which could be any font you want, by the way, like Arial or Tahoma or whatever you'd like. As a best practice, you should put serif or sans serif. Georgia is a serif font. Close it off with a semicolon and a closing parentheses, and then make sure to put in the closing tag that corresponds with the opening tag. To see the changes we make with this style, we can save options. Looking at our website, we'll see that the font changed. However, writing that inline CSS also overwrote the other styles on this header, particularly the size of it. Because of that, we'll need to use our second method external CSS to make a change on a header. However, I want to note that that inline CSS styling can be removed from our header and placed on some body text and the change can be reflected there as well. Note how our body text is now in the Georgia font because we put that new paragraph styling on it and our header text is back to normal. To use our second method of changing the header text, external CSS, which is also the recommended method of web designers as I said before, we have to find out exactly which styling the theme developers intended to have on this home page. To figure that out, we can right click anywhere and then click inspect element. Once we're inside inspect element, we can see our HTML on the left and our CSS on the right. And don't worry if this looks kind of confusing because it'll all be worth it to learn this and I think you'll be totally fine because I know I was confused at first and now I'm totally fine. Keep track of what part of the website is highlighted in blue as I navigate down the document tree, as it's called, on the left hand side. We can see the container reduces what's selected, and ideally we want to find just this make your website area. To do that, we need to open the container and then zero in on our text. Featured content brings us the left side of the website, and featured image brings us the right side. Let's open up the left side, and here we have Make Your Website. Make Your Website is surrounded by a class called Feature Title, and that's exactly what we want to focus on. Using the CSS on the right, we can have a little fun. We can remove the styling that the original developers, the folks at Cyberchimps, designed, and we can see what each one of these little CSS stylings does. For example, letter spacing is just the space in between each letter in the header. Kind of cool. 
what we want to do is keep all this styling and add to it. So we can remember this part, dot featured title, which matches this class over here. It's a period or a dot because we're dealing with a class. And then we can go back to our theme options, open up the CSS styles box, which you might have seen before, and just type in dot featured title. Now it's time to write our CSS. Let's bring up the font family, enter a new font, make sure it's spelled right, close it off, and then put in the closing bracket. And for best practice, we'll add the serif. Now we can change the header font simply by saving options. And when we refresh our site, we'll see that we now have our beautiful Georgia font along with the rest of the styling that the original developers put onto our website. So that's pretty cool. You just learned how to change the header font as well as the font on the body of the website. As a general rule of thumb, you should use inline CSS just to make specific one-time changes on certain parts of the website. Because if you go ahead and put inline CSS, like our first method showed, in multiple places around the website, if you want to change them all, you'll have to manually go in and change each one. External CSS, on the other hand, is good for making wide sweeping changes to the site, like changing every header at once, or maybe every piece of text in the footer, or something like that. Thanks so much for watching. It'd be a huge help if you could comment on the video and rate the video. And thanks a lot for watching because as usual, I really enjoyed making this tutorial. I'll see you next time.